you know, this is one of the things that's regarded as one of the most difficult concepts in secondary mathematics. So I'm hoping to make this easier for you using this video tutorial. Let's dig into this, trig identities. So first of all, what is an identity? An identity is just an equation with a left and right side that is always true regardless of the value that you put in for the variable. Pretty much your goal with these things, you're gonna be given a left and a right side and you have to show that the left side is equal to the right side. And the way that you do that is by using basic trig identities. I'm not gonna go over these in immense detail, but you will just see like a, a summary here. These are gonna be given to you on tests or quizzes, usually depending on who your teacher is. So this Pythagorean identity, this sine squared, this is the same as sine theta squared. If I put that in brackets, some people are confused by that, but this, this just says sine theta squared plus cos theta squared or sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. That's what we call the Pythagorean identity. There's a great proof for this. I won't go over that in this video, uh, but just check that out if you're interested. Quotient identity, this is sine over cos is equal to tan. I've shown you this in one of my previous video lessons. Uh, where I talked about the unit circle, so you can pop into that one if you're interested in where this one comes from. And the reciprocal identities, recently I did a video on trig reciprocal ratios, that's where these guys come from, and just remember that these hold true if you square your expression as well. All right, so like I said, your goal is to show that the left side and the right side are equal. These are some tips that I've put together to help you with trig identities. Just a disclaimer here, trig identities are very difficult. Your teacher sometimes, even the most experienced mathematicians have, have difficulty with these sometimes. Using these tips, just follow these sequentially. Start with the most complicated side. That's the first thing you always wanna do. Just identify the side that looks the, the most complicated and tackle that one. I know often you're reluctant to <laughs> tackle complicated math expressions, uh, but that's the first thing you wanna do. Second thing, you wanna write everything in terms of sine and cos. And you do that using your identities. So if you're ever given an expression with cosecant or secant or cotangent or even tan for that matter, using your identities to write everything in terms of sine and cos really simplifies your expression. And you'll see that in the examples that I do here. Uh, number three, common factoring. This is huge. If you are not familiar with common factoring, you cannot really be successful with trig identities if you're not a strong common factor. Fourth thing here, find a common denominator if possible or necessary. If you don't know how to find a common denominator of two fractions, I suggest just doing a little bit of research on that before you move on. And lastly, use tricks. You're going to see a lot of these. There's one in this video that I'll do at the end, and you're going to be scratching your head saying, why did he do that? And it's really uh, just because. <laughs> You'll develop a whole repertoire of these that you can use when you, when you start practicing. But let's dig into one of these problems. So first example, it just says, prove that cotangent of x over cosecant of x is equal to cos of x. So your goal is to show that this left side is equal to the right side. Now it's good practice with trig identities to only focus on one side, not both. You don't wanna flip flop back and forth. So you remember the first step I told you is to start with the most complicated side, arguably cotangent over cosecant is more complicated than cos. So I'm gonna focus on the left-hand side. That's what this LS refers to here. Okay, the second thing says write everything in terms of sine and cos. So I don't like cotangent or cosecant as I'm sure you don't either. So I'm gonna sort of just rewrite these bizarre reciprocal ratios in terms of sine and cos if possible. So I'm gonna start by saying that I know cotangent is one over tan, and I know that cosecant is one over sine. Okay, so you can see I've got this new division of two fractions here. So I've got one over tan divided by one over sine. If you're ever dividing by a fraction, you can flip the bottom fraction and multiply. That's exactly what I'm gonna do here, except when I do that, I write tan as sine over cos. Okay, so if I write tan as sine over cos, I've got one over sine over cos, also known as cos over sine. And if I flip and multiply by sine, I'm just multiplying by sine. Okay, so a little bit of a jump in steps there, but essentially what I did is I said, okay, I know one over tan is cos over sine, and then I can just simply multiply by sine. I'm kind of just abusing my program here a bit, but that's where I got that from. Okay, so you can see that I changed my expression into sine and cos, and conveniently enough, I can cancel out these sine expressions, right? This sine is over is over one, so I can, you know, I can cancel those guys out nicely, and I'm left with just cos. Well, that's what I was trying to show in the first place. I wanted to show that the left side equals the right side. So it's always a good idea just to conclude, therefore, left side equals the right side. Um, I've seen some people stamp their solution with like a little square and a, you know filling in the square or saying QED which I think is Latin for it is proved. Either way just conclude by saying that you've shown the left side equals the right side. 
one thing on your tests or quiz, don't just you know do a bunch of work that's wrong and say left side equals right side and see if your teacher's paying attention. They will catch you. <laughs> so uh, moving on, another example here. Prove that tan squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So arguably, again, the left-hand side is maybe the more difficult side. You could say secant is, but I'm gonna say that this one's got more going on. So let's focus on that left-hand side. Okay, so taking a look at the left-hand side, remember one of my steps was once you've started with the most complicated side, you're going to write everything in terms of sine and cos. Well, I'm going to take tan, and I'm probably going to write that in terms of sine and cos, and I'm going to do that using a quotient identity that says sine over cos is tan, likewise sine squared over cos squared is also tan. Okay, so that's what I've done here. Okay, so great, I've got something started here. Um, I'm gonna call on another one of my steps that says to find a common denominator if possible. I'm adding a fraction and some number one here. You can also just remember that this is a one over one. So I'm essentially adding two fractions. So what I'm being called to do here is just find the common denominator between these two. I won't go over that in immense detail here, but the common denominator between cos squared and one would be cos squared. So I multiply one over one by cos squared over cos squared. I'm kind of hoping you're comfortable with common denominators if you're watching this video. Okay, so now that I've got a common denominator, I can just add straight across. So I'm gonna simply combine my numerators and my denominators stay as, as cos squared theta. Some people, if you're one of the algebraically weak people, <laughs> will, will do this and cancel those two. Please do not do this. This is not allowed. You are adding here. Okay, so be careful. You can't just cancel those out. However, on top, this looks really nasty, sine squared plus cos squared. As it turns out, this expression is one of the most beautiful things that you can possibly see in a trig identities problem. Because if you look at your Pythagorean identity, this is equal to one. So that mess on top, that whole thing is just gonna simplify to one. So we've got one over cos squared theta. So we've got one over cos squared theta. That's gonna be secant squared theta. So we can just kind of conclude that our left side does in fact equal our right side because we've simplified this down to a secant squared theta. Awesome example. These things are a lot of fun. I have a great time with these. Most people don't. I get a lot of weird looks when I tell people that I enjoy these. We'll do two more. They are kind of increasing in difficulty, as you can see. Okay, so prove that this left side equals that right side. Arguably, the right side is more complicated. There are three different expressions being multiplied together. I'm going to start on the right-hand side, and if you recall the tip that I gave you on writing everything in terms of sine and cos, that was tip number two. Great place to start. Let's just take our right-hand side and write everything in terms of sine and cos. So sine and cos stay the same. Remember, tan is sine over cos. Now I'm multiplying. I can cancel out these two coses nicely, and that's perfect because I don't want those there. I want to simplify my expression. So all I'm left with is sine of theta times sine of theta. Well, that's going to be sine squared theta. I'm in a pinch now because I've essentially simplified the right-hand side as far as I can, and I haven't quite shown that the left side is equal to the right side. But if we look at our Pythagorean identity, you remember this one that was so beautiful? Anytime really that you have sine squared or cos squared, this is going to be relevant. Okay, if we bring this cos squared over to the other side in our Pythagorean identity, you can see that the left side here, sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared. Well, conveniently enough, that's what we have on the left side. So why not just take our sine squared theta and substitute in one minus cos squared theta? Prove that trig identity. Okay, this is a handy little trick. This last one is a doozy. I'm warning you right now, this is one of the nasty ones that requires a little trick. I'm gonna pick on the right-hand side, no particular reason. I, these are arguably the same level of complexity on, on the left side and the right side. I'm gonna pick on the right-hand side. And just for a moment, I'm, I'm gonna put that in brackets and I'm gonna circle this negative sign right here because I'm about to show you a trick that you would really not necessarily be able to develop on your own, but I'm hoping you can kind of follow my logic here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take the top and I'm gonna say, okay, I've got one minus cos theta on top. I wanna multiply by something that's going to make the top something nice to work with. And usually nice things to work with in trig identities involve that Pythagorean identity. So I want to somehow get a sine squared or a cos squared on top. The way I do that is by multiplying by what's called the conjugate. Uh, essentially what you're doing is multiplying by the same thing on top with a different sign. So I've just switched the sign to a positive. Okay, and I, as usual, I have to multiply the bottom as well or else I'd be changing my expression. 
So this is essentially, this is what I like to call creatively multiplying by one. I haven't changed my expression at all, but I've put myself in a situation where if I foil this out, you're gonna see that I end up with something pretty beautiful. Okay, on top, I've got one times one, one times cos, negative cos times one, negative cos times cos. You can see I get a situation where I've got two coses in the middle with opposite signs. Those guys are gonna cancel out nicely. And what I've got left on top is a nice one minus cos squared. On the bottom, I'm just going to multiply back to the top. Okay, you can see I've got one minus cos squared on top. Remember what I said about that Pythagorean identity? You can kind of manipulate that as, as you see fit. If you have one minus cos squared, remember you've got sine squared. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this into sine squared. And you know, this is maybe the moment for you that you start thinking, aha, I see where this is going. I've got sine squared theta on top, I've got a sine theta on the bottom, and these, are, these guys are being multiplied on the bottom. So I can cancel out one sine theta on top with the sine theta on the bottom. You can see that I've got sine theta over one plus cos theta. And I've showed that the left side equals the right side. This one was definitely a challenge. If you do not know this trick, I don't really know another way that you can show that this left side equals right side for this trick identity problem. So that's one of those handy tricks to keep in mind. Don't be afraid to multiply it creatively by one using that conjugate. That's all I'm gonna do for this video. I will post another video on trig identities because there are even harder ones, believe it or not. Uh, so stay tuned for that.